Greetings everyone and welcome. I'm your host Captain Rye and in today's video I'm back playing in a cruiser that I used to play a lot a long time ago but haven't played in a very long time. The Japanese heavy or light cruiser depending on its mood Mogami here in World of Warships. As the battle gets underway it's Zipang it's Domination match mode, and it is a tier 10 battle, and I am in a tier 8 cruiser. Now, those of you who've played the Japanese cruiser line will be pretty well aware that the Mogami has a couple of special things about it. Number one, it has the ability to choose whether it wants to be a light cruiser with 15 six inch guns and five turrets or whether or not it wants to be a heavy cruiser just like the predecessor Miyoko and its successor Ibuki with 10 8 inch guns in five turrets it also has very very light armor and a citadel that basically runs from bow to stern Combine that with the fact that it's got a fairly flat broadside, and you've got yourself what is effectively a ship with a very large glass jaw that is pretty much penetrated by anything. So in this cruiser, you have to play it very, very smart. Now, what I've got this cruiser set up with, with my captain skills and with the modules on it, is basically concealment expert. I run on a full concealment build on this ship, and with that full concealment build, the Mogami can actually launch torpedoes from stealth. And now, you're not going to have a lot of margin for error for doing that, but if you play it smart and you see a ship coming towards you, and he's just outside of torpedo range, you can launch those torpedoes, and you can turn away without being detected, but more importantly, you can also launch those torpedoes by turning around. Now, as I push up here, friendly team pushed into the B cap point, pushed into the A cap point, and pushed into the C cap point. At this time, we're capping C, we're contesting A and B. And as I push up here to give support to the C cap point, I come out past the island and I get spotted by an enemy gearing. Now that is a bit of a problem because look at the number of ships back over here that are shooting at me. I've now found myself in a bit of an overextended situation and look at that, I have an enemy Kurfürst pushing up to well inside my detection range. So even if I manage to kill this gearing, I'm still going to be detected, especially because I'm firing my guns. Now I've almost managed to finish off that gearing at this point. He's very, very low health. Unfortunately for me, he gets back behind that island. I'm not able to continue shooting at him. But my team does manage to secure a first blood. Somehow we managed to take out a cruiser. I don't know where he was located, but he does finish it off. Managed to avoid getting massively raffle stomped by that pair first. But the enemy carrier is going to pick on me. As we can see here, the Mogami's anti-aircraft, not the best in the world. The good news to me is I have a friendly battleship back behind me there. Bismarck, though, still not the best in the world, but between the two of us, we do make up some decent anti-aircraft. Kurfürst on fire, did get hit by a torpedo, is flooding, is very, very low health, and he's got more torpedoes from our Yu Yang coming in there. Managed to try and get back behind this island just before he's able to get his shots off there. Luckily for me, because I was basically turning broadside, did manage to avoid taking too much damage. When you're playing the Mogami, especially if you're bottom tier, or if you're playing any cruiser, especially bottom tier, you gotta use the islands for cover. If you find yourself overextended, try your best to get yourself turned around, avoiding shots, and get back into cover. Cover and concealment. Always, always important when you're playing in a cruiser, especially when you're playing bottom tier cruisers. Now the problem with the Mogami here, compared to other bottom tier cruisers, is that the Mogami does not get a heal. 
which is unfortunate because I really think tier 8 cruisers need at least some kind of a heal. Especially when you're fighting tier 10s pretty regularly. As the battle continues here, it's going pretty quickly for my team. We've managed to kill two of the three enemy destroyers. We still have two of our own. And we've secured the C cap point, so we're actually gaining points here. Additionally, we've now secured the A cap point. So now we're gaining points twice as fast, and the enemy team hasn't yet managed to secure a cap point. In fact, at this point, they've effectively been driven back to their own spawn. Now, because the Mogami I have set up is very, very much so a concealment build, I have a 9.4 kilometer detection range. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use that stealth to my advantage here, and I'm going to push in, and I'm going to take the B cap point from the enemy, as the enemy manages to secure their first two kills on my team. So that's going to keep them in the game just a little bit longer here. Using the island for cover here, and using the spotting mechanics provided by the game from my other ships to lob shots over these islands and onto the enemy cruisers that are back over there. Now these cruisers, of course, they're also light cruisers, the Cleveland back over there. Lots of angry six-inch guns can cause about the same amount of damage as the Mogami can. The other difference is his citadel sits a little bit lower in the water and it's a little bit harder to hit. Enemies now pops up there. He's just inside my range and he's trying to get away there, back behind an island, running away from the team. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to provide shots out. Hopefully I can hit him. I do manage to just barely graze him. And realistically, what I'm trying to do here is set fires. The Mogami 6-inch guns don't have the best fire chance, but because you have 15 of these shells, you can put out a lot of rounds reasonably quick. And that is where the low fire chance really goes away because now you're just going to put out high explosive rounds until you set a fire or two or three. Enemy Cleveland broadsiding out in the open. Now realistically given his position and given what he's focusing on if I really wanted to I could switch over to the armor piercing at this kind of range the six inch armor piercing would effectively just plunge right through his deck and probably cause a reasonable amount of damage but as you can see there I've managed to set him on fire and as you can see there he's taking a lot of fire from the rest of my team so the question is am I going to manage to secure a kill or not based on the fact that he's still being shot at now he has put the fire out so I'm gonna have to continue shooting at him luckily even angled here, the Mogami has the advantage of having three turrets forward. Very lucky on my end as I'm able to land enough hits to secure my first kill in the game. And now I have an enemy Zhao. And not only do I have a Zhao in front of me, tier 10, heavy cruiser, decent armor, 12 8 inch guns. He's got torpedoes that I have to think about as well. I switch over to the armor piercing because he is giving me somewhat of a broadside here and I'm kind of hoping I can hit him for a couple of citadels. At these kinds of ranges, the flatter trajectory should realistically punch through cruiser armor, but that's not always a guarantee here. Additionally, cyclone going on, which means all I have to do is stop firing long enough, let that Zhao get outside of the visual range for the cyclone, and I drop off detectability. Now you'll notice there, I stopped, I started reversing again, Zhao has torpedoes, I do not want to push up. He's got more health than me, he's a tier 10 cruiser, he's even got a heal. I'm in a Mogami. Got to play it smart. Enemy team manages to pull the situation back with the teams a little bit closer. They still have a destroyer left here. They've got two cruisers and a carrier. But look at the situation. They basically utterly collapsed and never pushed to take a cap. As a result, my team currently up almost 700 points, and the battle only 10 minutes old. Unless we royally screw up in the next, well, five minutes or less, our team is going to win outright. Now that Zhao pops up again. I kind of knew where he was at based on the mini-map. I fired off torpedoes. If he continues going around this island, I might actually hit him. Switch over to the armor piercing again in an effort to try and get some of those citadel shots. 
And you can see there the armor piercing did do a decent amount of damage, about 4,000. Zao is starting to turn hard and away. So this is a little bit unfortunate as I still had armor piercing loaded, but that's all right. Switch back over to the high explosive and cause some problems for that Zao. He is still burning, and I think that might actually have been my fire originally, but it looks like another friendly ship back over there, the Des Moines, firing as well. So that fire is him. Switch back over to the armor piercing because Zao is giving broadside yet again another 3,700. He fires high explosive. If he fired armor piercing, I would probably not have survived that. Can I get the kill? Come on. Oh, just so close. We managed to cap out on points there just before I'm able to secure that kill. Still though, 73,000 damage in a bottom tier cruiser. Not the worst situation in the world shot down two planes did connect one torpedo and did get a base cap a couple of base cap ribbons what is surprising though top of the team for xp earn as a bottom tier cruiser in the game here didn't shoot down the most planes didn't cause the most damage i'm sure 2100 anyway that's it for today's video folks if you like the video hit that like button hit the subscribe button leave a comment down below if you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email. If you'd like to help support me and the channel, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live, albeit intermittently, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.